Welcome back to the Weekend Roundup bonus episode. Yum. Today, we are going to be wrapping up, or rounding up, I should say. I should never say wrapping Seriously. up. <laughs> we are going to be rounding up episodes four and five of Euphoria, which I'm actually happy that we're just doing four and five because this is going to come out a lot sooner so that people are a little bit more, Yeah, they can recap it while it just happened, you know? Right. And also, I just feel like there's so much to talk about There is already. so much to talk about. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much to talk about. <laughs> there is a lot to talk about. Episode four was all over the place with plots, whereas episode five just kind of consistently followed one plot. Yeah. So it was very different because, honestly, if I think about it critically, if I give a critical analysis, I think episode four kind of was doing a little bit too much. I wish they had done less and focused on the plots yeah, that they had. But I also think all that stuff had to happen before episode five. Yeah, that's true. That's true, too. Well, do you want to talk about episode four? Yeah. Let's what happened? Well, I mean, we had one of the most intricate introductions that we've seen thus far, which was Rue and Jules dressing up in all those costumes. costumes right. And then Rue receiving some head that she just <laughs> unfortunately could not enjoy because she was so strung out on drugs. Too hopped up. I feel bad for Jules. I, feel I do too. That's, that kind of sucks when you're you're trying your hardest and it's, it's just, just like ugh. it's just not working. Yeah, like you're really you're really putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. putting yourself in a vulnerable position, mm -hmm. and do you think it's you? I just, I don't know how she, like Jules, didn't know that she was Rue was on drugs. That Rue was on drugs. Like I feel like it was pretty obvious. Yeah, and then I look at all our notes written down here. <laughs> Check out our cool podcasting planner for those on YouTube. Amazon, not personally branded because we're super <laughs> professional now. Of course. So let me refer to my notes. We also had <laughs> Nate screaming at Cassie. Yeah. Honestly, I, saw, I thought that was interesting because I saw so many parallels between when Maddie, or sorry, when Nate was screaming at Maddie while she was sitting on the bed and season one when she was like not everyone's a hundred percent straight or a hundred percent gay yeah remember that when he was screaming at her and then it's the same thing in season two with cassie and they had the same hairstyle and they were both wearing his shirt i think just the same guy you mm -hmm. know it just proves same guy same thing you and can't really expect anything different but cassie i mean i just how many times on this podcast am i going to talk about sydney sweetie's acting like, probably a lot. Probably a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot. Because she's been doing really good. She was, she did such a good job of not really taking it too far over the top in that scene. Like, I think some people think that she does. I'm crazier. <laughs> I am crazier. Here's Johnny. <laughs> she did have her here's yeah, Johnny Yeah, it was a little moment. scary. I, I think that was, like, the point, though. Mm -hmm. You know? She, she had to kind of be extra about it because... Mm -hmm. Otherwise, no one would believe she was crazier. It really reminds me of that red flag when guys say, like, oh, my ex is insane. My ex is a psycho. Mm. Well, how did she get that way? Like, was she a psycho yeah. before you started dating? Yeah. Or did you drive her to such you insanity? You drove her to be that way. Uh, what are your thoughts on her acting like Maddie's the other woman? Yeah, I don't really understand her viewpoint on that. I mean... <clears throat> I feel like it's a relatable plot line in the sense of like people kind of be doing something that they shouldn't be doing and then they'll be like, well, I'm right because it's love, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, oh, well, as long as we're in love and we end up together, everything's okay. I feel like Cassie's just so far into it at this point that she really does believe that like Maddie would be the other woman and she really does believe that Nate Loves going her. and talking to Maddie is completely wrong yeah. when it's really not. Yeah, it doesn't really make much sense. So, <laughs> and then he called her Maddie, and then... That was T. <laughs> Me watching as a Maddie. T. Okay. Big T. Um, love that. Love to hear that. And when she left and she was running down the stairs and he said, I love you, a lot of people thought saw that as him, like, sh getting soft and, like, showing his real emotion and that he really does love Cassie. I don't think that. I think that he just... The word love has no... 
meaning to him. Like he can really just, he can throw it around and he knows that people will listen. Yeah. He says, I love you. Like, I don't actually think that he. No, same. I just think he's a narcissist and manipulative. Mm -hmm. And I also think he has a weird obsession with Cassie. Because she's like the perfect. Right after. (laughs) She's like the perfect male gaze though. She's like the perfect woman to him because she fits all of his like absurd boxes of femininity. Which yeah, is what he fair. wants because I think he's actually attracted to Jules and that really like confuses him because he is one of those assholes who would just like not understand that loving like a trans woman would just be loving a woman. So yeah. he and also too there is also the fact that his dad hooked up with her. I mean uh, that is also probably Maybe more towards the forefront, but he's also definitely an asshole. Like that's, that's pretty brutal, though. Yeah. Imagine you like someone and you find out your dad hooked up with them. You watched it too. You watched it. Yeah, on the you tape. saw the tape. Yeah. I mean, no coming back from that. I would say mm-hmm. that was probably worst case scenario for Nate. At least it wasn't his first time seeing the tapes. Like he's he had seen them before when he was a child, which is <laughs> not like good. At least he saw them when he was a kid. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That just really makes it okay. <laughs> well, it wasn't like his very first time watching his dad. No, yeah, he knew on those somewhat tapes. what to expect. That's so twisted. Cal is a character that really intrigues me. Why did Cal go to Fez's again? Um, hmm, good question. I think he was. Oh, he was trying to find the tapes. He thought the he tape was might to be find a the tape. Fez's. <laughs> Maybe that could be wrong. So he went there because f- Nate had admitted that Fez beat him up. Yeah. Okay. And somebody had the tapes. And, and he someone had the tapes. So he probably assumed that it was Fez. Yeah. And Fez didn't it. know. Well, yeah, I'd say. So, <laughs> well, also, Ashtray beat the living shit out of uh, Violent Boy. I Cal. said it once and I'll say it again. I, I saw the funniest tweets. Like, imagine your highest shit. And, like, some guy comes in talking about how he is trying to find a tape that he recorded of a 17-year-old jewel. <laughs> like, I would be tripping the fuck out. You could tell he genuinely had no idea. Tape? I don't know shit about fucking tape. How many times am I going to do my Fez impression on here? Keep doing it so we get TikTok views. <laughs> but, see, interactions between Faye and Cal are not something I was expecting, but really enjoyed. I think Faye... There's more to Faye than we think. There is definitely more. A lot of people think that she might be some kind of undercover cop, things like that. I don't know about undercover cop. I think she works for the bad guys. I think, too. (laughs) Who's the bad guys? Like, the druggies. Like, the drug suppliers, drug dealers. So, actually, right before I came here, I saw a theory on TikTok that um, in her Vanity Fair, I believe it was Vanity Fair interview, um, that the actress did... The girl who plays Faye is a porn star, and mm-hmm. she had actually already done a Euphoria the parody like porn video <laughs> where she played Jules and someone else played Rue. And now she's on the now she's on the show. Brutal. Talk about manifest. Talk about climbing the ladder. <laughs> That's on manifestation. Your dreams. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, on manifestation. That's how you. Yeah, you put it on video. You manifest it. Yeah, and I. So. In her Vanity Fair interview, she said, um, it said that she was playing a spaced out prostitute. In Euphoria? Yes. But we haven't really seen any plot line of of her being a prostitute. So a lot of people think that maybe she works for that really nice quiet woman that told Rue, I would sell you to a bunch of freaky people. Like maybe she has like a prostitution ring where she gets the girls on drugs. I don't know about that. I think after... They all went there. I don't remember what episode it was, but when they Very made first like, one. yeah, like stripped down and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think after that, and before she was dropped off at Fez's house, they like made some kind of deal to like watch Fez. And she's the one who ratted on Fez. And she's gonna be the one who rats. And uh, honestly, I think Fez is gonna die. I think it's gonna be Fez's demise. I can't rest in peace. I can't. But you know, who knows? I also thought Rue was gonna die. I, season I three think without Rue. Die last night. Yeah, <coughs> before people, the app. Well, everyone thought that she died at the end. I mean, I guess we'll get to the end when we get to the end. But yeah, seeing um, Faye and Cal interact was probably my favorite part of the episode because I love yeah. when just two total random characters interact. Also, Faye um, saying to Cal, do you and your son like fuck people <laughs> together? 
<laughs> no, she's really funny. Like, she's just like, I feel like she's just like a normal person in Euphoria. Like, the way she acts, like, she's just like, what? Her fez She says what everyone's thinking. Yeah. 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 Her, my lips hurt when I watch her. Yeah. Her lips don't actually look like that. Oh, and she also said in an interview that all the drugs are crushed up baby, like, Advil. Yeah, I've read that, actually. How interesting. How much do you think the intern was running to the CDS <laughs> down the street to get baby Probably Tylenol? A lot. Um, and then, oh, yeah, I'm ready to talk about this. Jules and Elliot. Jules and Elliot. <laughs> What can I say? We got a question in our question forum asking mm -hmm. if we thought Elliot was a homewrecker. Wasn't that the question? Yes. Yeah. Our answer is yeah. I think he is, but I also think the home wasn't on a stable foundation. Therefore, it was pretty easy to be wrecked. Oh, home as in yeah. Ruin and Jules. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I just... I well, I mean, I already said this in the last Euphoria Roundup. Somebody who is that concerned about their partner cheating is because it reflects their own actions. I said yeah. that in the last episode. Was I correct? Yeah. Yes, I was. But I do. Here's my thing. I feel like Jules likes Elliot so much is because Elliot makes her feel like a woman. Yeah. Whereas she's going through a really tough gender identity crisis right now which yeah. is kind of like it's not really playing out on screen in dialogue it's kind of a yeah the and this, the special well and the, the special, special episode was like all about that yeah yeah so she's struggling with that and she even said when she was talking to elliot about hooking up with rue which i did not like i don't why yeah. would you talk about your sexual relationship with your partner with somebody else the whole thing is just weird their whole little trio their whole I trio think it's a weird is trio. weird you know you know what they are they're like those three weird kids in high school <laughs> that all like hooked up with each other or yeah because it trio. is exactly what they are <laughs> that's the thing euphoria people say euphoria is not realistic it's realistic i feel like in some senses like obviously over dramatized but like i think they do understand like certain aspects of high school that i aren't necessarily it's usually high school seen. is portrayed better than what it used to be which is like hashtag lol yeah like, that's what i mean like it's not like you know i hate that i know i hate it's that. very it's when very the texts show up on, on the, the screen. screen oh my god that's yeah annoying. i know it's it's giving that addison ray movie <sighs> yeah yeah he's but all that she's all that he's uh, she's all that yeah he's all that he's all that yeah we could do a special episode <laughs> talking about that ep that That's movie right. if anyone's interested. Um, Jules and Elliot. So when she was talking about going down on Rue and she said, I hate that I, I'm not good at eating pussy. And then she said, because it makes me feel like a guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then Elliot like showed her how and was like really flirty with that. Like, I feel like that that's proving my point that Elliot makes her feel the most like a woman whereas oh yeah rue doesn't yeah do you know what i'm saying like well, i think that rue, was like think of the contrast of rue just lying you know like lying and also not, not really having sex with jules yeah. whereas jules i think equivalates sex to attraction to attraction and validation and to love so they're totally on two separate paths with that because mm -hmm. rue does not Whereas Jules does. And it's because she's been so hypersexualized yeah. in order to like conquer femininity, like she said in her um, special episode. Yeah. So I think she's just having a real crisis with that. She is. And yeah, I don't want to blame everything on Elliot because obviously Jules is going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. I do think it's fucked up that they would make out every time we left the room that's, that's the just worst me, part. you know like that's the worst part of it all like they're not even trying to hide it you mm -hmm. know like they love the thrill and it's like you're like you're supposed to love Rue both of you that's like one of the better parts of this show though is that not any character is 100% good or 100% bad yeah well that's yeah and that's why it's so relatable i feel like to so many people mm -hmm. not not euphoria being the most relatable show ever mm -hmm. but you know what i mean like certain subplots or mm -hmm. random little things then they rob the the store which was unnecessary and i really yeah. did think that that is i one barely the even remember them robbing the store cuz so much stuff happened i know it was such a small plot but yeah. it led up to because they stole the beer, and then Rue was drinking in the backseat. Right, right, right. Jules right. freaked out. 
And then when Rue said, I can't fucking stand you, mean. I gasped. Really mean. Because I just wasn't expecting her to say something so rude to Jules. Like, I feel like Jules has kind of always yeah. been, like, the safe person. Yeah. That she doesn't really cross that line with. But Rue is just so far down in her addiction, which we get into in episode five, that she's just lashing out at everyone around her. Like, she lashed out at Elise. She lashed out at her mom. She lashed out at yeah. Jules. Um, well, yeah. That, and that's the sad truth of addiction which i think i think this season they're trying harder to not romanticize drug use as much as they did in the first season i know it was criticized a lot for that Mm -hmm. so i feel like this like episode five specifically but you know all of it is kind of in a like showing that Mm -hmm. trying to turn back time on that one i just i also think though when somebody who is obviously impaired should not just be dropped off on the side of the road when yeah. they say drop me off on the side of the road. Like you shouldn't listen to them. When no. They say that, yeah. You know? I just feel like Jules and Elliot are making every worst judgment call they could possibly make. Yeah. And, but, but and then also you have to think about it. Like they're in high school. I feel like I in high school, like you do just make stupid judgment calls cause you don't think about it. So like, that's another kind of realistic part of it true i i always forget that like when i said in the yeah. first the first roundup when it was like oh like rue is probably asexual because she doesn't want to hook up with her girlfriend or she's just 17 <clears throat> yeah like you she's know? just a kid did we think about that <laughs> yeah like that's the thing who's been through like a lot of traumatic shit yeah really traumatic Again, I stand by my point. Rue's sexuality is the only thing in this show that makes any logical <laughs> <laughs> sense at all yeah, really cal at the gay bar jeez i know that was kind of it was sad but at the same time i think a lot of people are feeling really bad for cal right now and i just can't yeah i mean i think it was an interesting thing for them to show especially after coming off the week before like Mm -hmm. it's like wow just sad i still think Derek might come back i really hope he does you you had said that they think he'll come back in a happy gay relationship or maybe not but i think he will because I think that would be, like, the saddest. Mm-hmm. And the show always tries to make you really sad, I feel like. So you probably thought that you were going to get your car accident bet when he was driving yeah, around like I that. I did. What are we on? Episode four or five now? Mm-hmm. Not, no real car accidents. By real, I mean main characters being in them. Mm-hmm. I just... Every scene... They do that on purpose, though. They have to do that on purpose. Yeah. There's something about car scenes... <laughs> That just that make it, you really tense. Yeah, but only in Euphoria. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, in other shows too, but in Euphoria, they like play it up. Yeah, they do. Also, I think it's just how it's shot too. Like the whole yeah. show is suspenseful. Yeah, and then when you put that in, you know, it's a thing. It's gonna happen. There's gonna I, be. A, I do gonna believe be a car you. accident. I mean, we've got. But a- also, it's cliche. Yeah, I feel like like in shows, there's always a car accident. Mm-hmm. It's just not Maybe Euphoria is above it. <clears throat> exactly. They always try to like throw things you don't expect. Mm-hmm. And I feel like at this point, I'm onto it. Other people must be onto it. Mm-hmm. It's too obvious. When you get it, we'll pop champagne or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's no. horrible well, because people will probably die. But yeah. like, I mean, like. <laughs> but like, I'm right. You're right. No, Zendaya posted that picture of them all in a car. And then like this like long thing about how it was so hard to film. I was like, <laughs> car accident. Mm-hmm. Car accident. I'm just waiting for it. I did really love Cal's monologue in the house when he came back from with a prosthetic dick with his prosthetic penis Mm -hmm. that he talked about. So it had a little button that peed that he operated off to the side. He said that in a press interview. What a talented man. And he he was like, this one was quite longer than the one in season (laughs) two because it had to stick out of my pants. Wow. I know. But uh, I just didn't want to know. I just find it really hard to believe that that was his wife's first time finding out about. Well, no, she. I think she definitely knows because she knew about. I think she was competing with Derek. I think she got pregnant on purpose. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I so, totally like, she think definitely so knows too. he's gay. Mm-hmm. So that, and that's why she was like, nah. Do you think whatever. she knew that he was cheating on her? I mean, probably. I feel like she probably assumed. Th- I think there's more to her, too, that we just don't know I about. would like to see more of her, because in season one, they made her look so bland. I mean, Nate literally said he didn't like his mother because she was weak at a pushover. Yeah. But the backstory they showed us, it didn't look... Little does he know. She's kind of a baddie. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to get a really good backstory for her at some point. 
probably in like season three, I would say. I feel like there's just a little bit yeah. too much going on right now. With Cal. Yeah. Cal needs to sort of his shit. Where do you Unless think he went? He left and he said, I don't think he said he was going to come back. Or oh. Maybe he's Derek. going to find Derek. I mean, that's what I like to think. Mm-hmm. In my head, that's where he is. And he said Nate was his biggest disappointment. Biggest regret. Biggest he? regret. And the porn he found on his other son's computer made his fucking jaw drop. Yeah. And if it's making that weirdo's jaw, yeah, jaw like, drop. I mean, like. Hell's pretty filthy. The <laughs> apple does not fall. Fall. The Ooh. apple does not fall far from the tree. Yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the best part of the entire episode, which is Maddie's birthday. I was like, it's my birthday birthday no it's not yeah no i think that was a really iconic just an iconic moment the hot tub the cassie chugging a different type of alcohol in every single scene was hilarious she had a bud light and then she had like an iced tea like a spiked iced tea and then she had a cooler and then she like she was a disaster she was going through it i think it's pretty apparent because it seems to be going over a lot of people's heads that Nate is only being nice to Maddie to get the tapes back. I mean, yeah, I think so. You know? Because uh, people on TikTok didn't seem to get that. I feel like it could potentially mean that, but it could also mean something else. Well, I mean, he probably you never know. He still has feelings for yeah. her, I would think. At the I just think you day, never but. know. So in the hot tub, I know we know now what happens, but did you think Maddie knew in the hot tub? Mm, not really. No, I don't think so. A lot of people were talking about how they think that Sam had them shoot it multiple times, like one where Maddie definitely knows, one where Maddie doesn't know, and one where she might, and then they put them all together because it was kind of confusing. She kept looking to Cassie. I mean, maybe, but also like that's your best friend. Yeah, sitting true. next to your boyfriend. Like if you were sitting next to a guy that I was confronting, I'd be like, "Are you seeing this shit? Are you seeing this right now?" Like I'd be pissed, you know. Mm-hmm. So I also just think. Maybe that's just good acting. Like, mm-hmm. and also Cassie kept talking. Like Cassie said some things, and You're it's like, not. yeah, like why would you say that? I'd be like, why'd you just say that? You know? Yeah. So I feel like there's that. It was uh, Cassie's. All Cassie scenes were shot so beautifully with the pink balloons and the pink <coughs> roses. And yeah, I will say I think, especially in the case of that hot tub scene, I do think Euphoria watchers overanalyze things a lot to the point where it overcomplicates everything. I agree. Like to the point where I do it too, but it's like to the like guys. Not to gatekeep, but I think that ever since the show's audience has gotten so big ever since it took well, I mean it took them so long to take yeah season two to come out. So a lot of people just kept watching season one and their yeah. audience was growing and growing and growing. And now, like, people are always saying, like, who the hell let the Riverdale wa- viewers come over to Euphoria? Because it's, like, every little thing is a clue. And we're now yeah, analyzing like, and this it's like, and that. And, and it's, like, honestly, I thought she was going to die that episode, Rue. Mm-hmm. But why didn't I just think she was going to, like, have, like, a freak out, you know? Because that, that kind of is the next logical step. Because she kind of already did overdose, mm-hmm. didn't she? So they're going to do that plot line again. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. Just like freak the fuck yeah. out. Yeah. Because that's like common, you know? Mm-hmm. And like Rue did kind of die mm-hmm. that episode. Yeah. Just the room we knew. Um, Cassie throwing up in the hot tub is... <laughs> Cassie throwing up in the hot tub was probably the most embarrassing thing I've moment. ever watched on television. One of, one of... I'd say it's the second most embarrassing moment for Cassie. Third most embarrassing is probably her mom dragging her out of the hot tub. Yeah. And fourth. First, first was when she was like so excited that Nate acknowledged her. And then like it just was nothing. He just went right yeah. past her. Yeah. Um, like that. If that happened to me, bro, I would be so upset. That would keep me up for months. I think it just <laughs> broke. I would not be sleeping. I think it just broke like the facade that nate had of who cassie was like this ultra feminine like now she's just too clingy like to you know so she's just trying to be someone else yeah so i would think they're done Mm, yeah maybe like obviously she's still into him i think now that maddie knows it's different 
Mm-hmm. But that's a ep five. And then the episode ends, of course, with Jules going over to Elliot's to stay. And then, you know what, though? The drama. Period for Hunter. You know, yeah. she got such a great ass shot, and it was long, <laughs> and her legs looked great, and that thong was just giving everything it needed to give. And she deserved that screen time. She did. Most 100%. of her screen time is her crying. So, you know, good for her for getting that ass yeah, out there. Yeah, that's facts. Mm-hmm. That's facts. Great ass. And then Elliot told her. Elliot killed the vibe. <laughs> Elliot did a little Elliot dirty talk foreplay. Yeah. And said, um, I have drugs. your girlfriend strung out on drugs. Classic. <laughs> I mean, Elliot. Which really comes into play in episode five. Yeah. Let's discuss. So I was horrified to watch this episode. No. Horrified. We really thought it was going to be a fun little girls' night Mm -hmm. watching Euphoria. This was the first night that all of our girlfriends had finally gotten caught up. And we could all watch on the same night. Do I ever regret having everyone over for that? Yeah, so we all hung out. We just didn't speak. And it was the worst viewing party I've ever seen. Everybody was upset. Everyone was disturbed. Nobody was speaking. Like, at one point, Ugh. I looked over, and everyone was just mouths open. Just no one was I saying was like a word. I was, like, Like, I couldn't speak. I was, like... <sighs> and then I'd just look over and just be, like, oh, my God. This is so funny that I'm with my friends right now mm-hmm. watching this. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, awkward. I know. That... So, Zendaya did post right beforehand that there was that she couldn't have gotten through this scene or this episode without uh the i god i feel horrible i don't know the people who play Rue's mother and sister but um she was like i couldn't have gotten through it without them and then she posted an interview about how rue hits her lowest this season and you know it, it really shows uh shines a light on addiction and everything i was hor- i was actually horrified i was really scared um but the scene where it starts off with her screaming at her sister being like, oh, you told mom that I smoke a little bit of weed. Like, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was so well done. Like that it actually was. sounded like two siblings. Well, I've siblings had that. Fighting. I've had that fight with my brother. So <laughs> it's like I, mm, it was it was here we go again. Yeah. Before it being relatable and that yeah. not being a good thing. <laughs> I, I everyone said that episode five was going to be Zendaya's Emmy performance and Fair enough. They did. Fair but I I felt so anxious. I just, and I know I'm not the only person who was like this, but I felt like just screaming at the television. Like, tell her it's for a drug dealer. Tell her those drugs were for a drug dealer. Tell her this. But they Brianna just made a good that. point that she's probably lied so many times. <laughs> that was my point. Oh, that was Brianna's your point? point. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, um, you're, she's a drug addict. Like people just don't believe drug addicts when they talk about where they got their drugs. How like mm-hmm. because like why would they? They're they would do anything to get their next fix, and mm-hmm. that includes lying to your family. Mm-hmm. What she's done, she did. She gave us a whole lesson on how to gaslight yeah. someone. So she that perfor- like that was just the most heartbreaking. I couldn't even speak. Like her mother and her sister in the room, like pushing the door closed while she knocked everything over yeah that was hor- i was frozen in in time yeah basically is what it felt like but it was such a good scene i just know zendaya was probably so exhausted after filming that when she oh my God, burst yeah. in the door literally like she was breaking down the door and came in and the mom was like covering her i felt horrible for um her younger sister and i just feel like too on television they don't normally show as much of the families of an addict because most of the time they're on their own like yeah you know but that i mean i just felt for gia as much as i felt for zendaya do you know what i mean yeah there's actually a really good movie i think it's called my beautiful boy or beautiful boy with timothy chalamet and steve carell I've always wanted to wow. watch that, but Crazy I don't really movie. want to put myself through that. It's not a like, fun thing to watch. I feel watch. like if you survived episode five of Euphoria, though, like, you'd survive it, you know? Like, it's same, very similar energy, energy, uh, like, concepts, themes, mm-hmm. messages. Another thing, too, that I wanted to point out is that I really don't think I've seen um, an anxiety or a panic attack played out on television like it was... Um, yeah, by Zendaya. It was... 
really well like even how she was yeah. speaking and trying to catch your breath and how it's like she'd go from like angry to like super angry upset. to rage and and she's also going through withdrawal and too and she withdrawal. was playing like she was acting that out mm-hmm. too which and is crazy it's just like even the way like her trying to speak while hyperventilating and her mom trying to calm her down i thought was so beautiful because it's like her mom is so scared of her and her mm. mom is so pissed off at her and so afraid but like she's still gonna be her mom and help her through those panic attacks which yeah. she's probably done her whole life yeah you know i i loved that scene of zendaya freaking out her mom like trying to talk her down because it sounded like when i would have anxiety attacks and yeah. my mom would try to talk me down and it was interesting to see that played out on television because i think other mental illnesses get a lot of um you know, rep- like sh- screen time. Screen time. They get a lot um, of play out there, but, but like, anxiety just doesn't have the representation. Yeah, but an anxiety attack, like mm. showing an anxiety attack on camera, was just. I think it was really well done. Yeah. Also, though, like Rue finding out Jules was there. So we're idiots. Embarrassing. And we thought Gia said that. Well, honestly, I'm not even fully convinced that <laughs> that it was Jules. Yeah, I think it w- was. I mean, it, it could have been. So. Base, we're referring to when um, I keep I'm going between Zendaya and Rue. When yeah. Rue um, said that, it kept asking where the pills were, and then you hear Jules from the living room say, "We flushed them." Mm. Like I thought, Gio said that. I thought Gio said but that too. Honestly, in it the makes end, way more sense that it was Jules. Yeah, though. because in them right after she was like, "Oh, Jules is here." Yeah, aren't you embarrassed? Jules yeah. is here, and Elliot was sitting there. <sighs> that scene of her yelling at. Well, the thing when is, she hits Elliot. Yeah. The thing is, it's supposed to be a really sad scene, but when they put the camera on Jules, all of us just went, she looks so pretty. <laughs> She's looking really good right now. Yeah. Oh, she looks so cute and all fresh face and just sad. I have, can you tell I have a crush on her? Um, but that was cold as fuck showing up in Ethan's clothes for that. Yeah. That was cold as fuck. Ethan. Elliot. Ethan. Yeah, you said Ethan. Oh, there's another character on the show, Ethan. Cat's boyfriend. Right. Yeah. Poor guy. He's about to get the... I think he already did. Yeah. I mean, because so many of Cat's scenes have been cut, I just, yeah, feel, I just like feel like his scenes that. are going with yeah. it, too. So... Brutal. Probably not going to get uh, much more info on, on him, but... On the drama. Um, I was also just... I mean, every Zendaya shouldn't... Zendaya. Rue shouldn't have yelled at Jules the way she did, obviously. But, I mean, she was kind of right. What was her point again when she was yelling at well, her? Well, the the point that stuck with me is like you don't you love, don't love me, love, love that I love you. Love you. being loved. <laughs> yeah, basically. And Which that, is like, facts. that is she true. She just cheated on you because she wasn't feeling enough sexual desire, yeah. you know, from you. And instead of communicating that, just fucked your best friend. Which, I mean, sure. Um, I saw a lot of scenes of like Hunter Real. and Zendaya, like hugging each other in between takes because it was just so hard for them. <laughs> It's really sad. I couldn't imagine acting on a show that was like that. I feel like that would just be so emotionally Like exhausting. imagine getting up in someone's face and screaming at them. <laughs> and, and then just they, being buddies after. Yeah. Like I actually think I would just start to take it personally. Yeah. That's just they probably dramatic, do. Though. Like I'd be like. They probably I like do. I was, that I'm, seemed a little real. That seemed a little too real. And that's why she deserves her Emmy. Yeah. That's the facts. I was really upset with Elliot for saying um, I shouldn't have said anything. I liked Rue the way she was. Fuck you. You liked yeah. her better when she was on a fuck ton of drugs and lying to everybody. But he would just feel guilty because he would feel like he caused that whole freak out. You I know? Just, so I, I get why he said it. I obviously don't agree with it, but I understand where he's coming from. Because you have to think each character has their own reasons and things I'm you know just it's dying. just everything is a gray area i'm just dying for an elliot backstory i need to know more mm-hmm. about him i'm really confused about him i've seen people on twitter being like oh he just he got rue or he got jules hot or no sorry he got jules drunk and rue high and that's when he hooked up with jules like he was like taking advantage of the situation and it's just like i don't know because i don't know anything about his character so yeah. i don't know anything about his motives or or what he's trying yeah. to accomplish here um, but luckily enough, Rue agrees to go to the hospital, but then unfortunately yeah. does jump out of the car and then runs away, and robs runs a away. house, causes a car, causes accident. a car accident, not the car accident I was waiting for, but mm-hmm. yeah. How did she get away? When she got caught under the bed by the 
I actually that's a she really, really good question. It. She just booked it. It just didn't make any sense. Honestly, though, like imagine looking under the bed and just seeing a face, yeah. seeing like Zendaya. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! It's like seeing Zendaya, you're like, oh, hey, like I, I honestly feel like I'd be in such shock. I wouldn't know like what, what to, to do. do. So if they got out fast enough, I'd be like, holy shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Like, just imagine me being the homeowners in that situation. Brutal. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> me, like, scared to go home. I'm like, <laughs> Zendaya might be under the bed. I'm like, Zendaya? <laughs> <laughs> you Are you there? <laughs> Rue? <laughs> no, like, yeah. Um, and then going and seeing the drug dealer again. Mm-hmm. She went and saw her. No, well, before that, she went and saw Fez. And she tried to right. take and Fez pills it out. From, from Grandma. Mm-hmm. Which is... Like, really bad. Well, yeah, because really she's at a point bad. where she's just desperate. Like, I know, but I wonder, I, I say that because I wonder if her and Fez's relationship can come back from that. Like, you know. Yeah, I think Fez's understanding of the fact that she's a drug addict, though. Mm-hmm. Like, he knows how to deal with people who are drug addicts. And mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, him kicking her out was what him, needed to happen. Him doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if he just won't accept her back, but I think it's Fez, and I think he thinks that they're family, which is what he said. Mm-hmm. And I think that will bite him in the ass, but I don't think he's done with her. Mm-hmm. You're right, though, because he did tell that lady that Rue is like family, and now she's screwed that lady over. Rue screwed yeah. that woman over. So Fez. I mean, not yet. Like, she still has more time, apparently, right? She said it best. She said, you don't look like someone who's going to come up with $8,000. Yeah. Well, that's because thing. she already gave her two. Yeah. Two or three. Two and then jewel- a bunch of jewelry. She robbed. Brutal. I wasn't expecting her to be as nice. Like, I kept waiting for this lady to do the something twist. fucked. Yeah. And when she woke up, I was expecting it to be like, you're stuck here now. Like, we're, like selling you or you know what i mean yeah especially when she gave her the morphine in the bathtub yeah like she was in drugs she was just so women in the drug industry she was so kind to her and her just being able to leave like that felt that feels unfinished to me and she really took care of her too yeah like she made sure yeah withdrawal symptoms were gone yeah gave her a little bed yeah i wonder why she wouldn't give her pills but she gave her morphine isn't that all she had? She, no, she, she had she the, big, the drug yeah. thing out of the. That's interesting. To yeah, me. and they focused on the morphine, morphine for a lot. Well, that's because they Sunday as a yeah probably didn't sign no a nudity, nudity contract as most high celebrities do. So why focus on the morphine? Could have been anything. True, we really knew it was yeah. morphine. Can you get addicted to morphine? <coughs> Maybe yeah. she'll be addicted to yeah, that. Yeah, you, you can. can. Yeah. Oh. Clearly, Indeed, I don't have a lot of drug knowledge. <laughs> this is the extent of my drug knowledge. I actually know show. everything I know about drugs from a grade eight health class and euphoria. Mm-hmm. So that actually, yeah. And that's yeah. I think that's something. I think drugs and addiction is something that needs to be talked about a lot more. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? We skimmed right over super casually because we jumped right into the woman taking yeah, care what? of her. Is when she went to Lexi's. Yeah, that and then the whole Cassie Maddie showdown at the intervention. Yes, that uh, Ugh, Rue hard. really because the fuck was Cassie talking about? You just gotta take it one day at a time. Like it's you could tell she's someone who also does not know anything about drug use and drug addiction. Me and Cassie are one and the same, <laughs> and I've always felt this way. Yeah, like she obviously just didn't know how to handle it. Big and, like, boobs blonde zero knowledge about drugs but trying to help oddly attracted to nate jacobs (laughs) yeah like (laughs) makes sense but i feel like she just wanted to help because that's cassie you know Mm -hmm. and she didn't know any other way than cassie would try to say that but that's one of those things like if you don't know what to say you shouldn't say anything Cassie is definitely someone who like when their friends are having mental health problems like when their friends are going through the deep depression they're Mm -hmm. like She's like, just choose happiness. Like, yeah. make yourself a cup of tea and do a face mask and, like, you'll feel better. Like, yeah. I can just see Cassie being that. I can see that, too. But I also think she goes through a lot of depression. So I feel like she might. But she doesn't acknowledge it as depression. Like, I don't think she's in tune yeah, with that's the true. fact of what's actually going on, that's you know. True. But uh, anyway, Rue said, I know you're not laughing, Cassie. <laughs> she really went for it. How long have you been fucking Nate Jacobs? 
I just hey Cassie. As soon as she said Cassie, I was like, if Cassie had Damn. held herself together even just a little bit more, I do feel like she could have gotten away with it because Rue is obviously not the most reliable person in that situation. Which Cassie yeah. was trying to, which is fucked up. But yeah, Cassie was trying to be like, why would you believe her? She's a drug addict. Yeah, like <laughs> right when she was giving Cassie. Her like, here we go again with yeah. the, with the lack of drug ed- education. Yeah, so. I mean, are you really crazier than Maddie Cassie? Like you said you were, if you just break down crying at yeah. the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Also, Kat was just so funny, <laughs> so funny to me. Dude, this is an intervention. And the mom being like, you guys are acting like animals, go die. <laughs> like, it is kind of awkward. Like, they really. I can't believe Maddie didn't fucking swing on her. Like, that was a very tame reaction, I felt. Probably just because yeah. of the situation that they were in. And also, I feel like it was like shock value Mm -hmm. like she really didn't expect that i I mean maddie is it totally appropriate to ask the person who's going through withdrawal in the middle of their intervention when they saw rue how long ago (laughs) was this i just Um, feel like that's inappropriate yeah no it definitely is (laughs) but would i react the same yeah you fuck my ex (laughs) and you're the one crying yeah like i'd be pretty pissed yeah i'd be mad so So rue could be dead that was one of our worst cliffhangers i think that we've gotten on the show right like, Rue, because do you think it's Allie? i don't know her sponsor maybe i would really like that i'm surprised she didn't go there i'm not well she i mean cut she, ties with him. she did cut ties with him but because she, she would still she's done that in the past where she cuts ties with someone but she still shows up at their door you know yeah i think it's a little different this time mm-hmm. there's a i feel like there's a point where it's like there's no going back mm-hmm. and she knew that she couldn't go back after her comment so for next week they really didn't give us much for the trailer. It's been the like the um the least descriptive, I guess you could say, trailer that they put out, but all it really did show was Maddie being like, I wanna fucking kill Cassie and then the C D and a gun. Right. The tape. The tape. The tape. What do you think's gonna happen with that? <sighs> Here's the thing. I don't know. People always ask me, what do you think is going to happen next week? Do you have any bets on what's happening next week? No. How am I ever supposed to guess what direction this show is going in ever? I have no idea what's happening one minute to the next minute to the next minute. I think, too, they in the trailers, they try to set it up as one thing. And then that obviously obviously doesn't happen. Like, I don't think Maddie's going to murder Cassie. No. No, no, no. But (laughs) But you never know. This show is crazy, man. I think Nate's going to somehow get the tapes back. Or maybe Maddie's just going to give him the tape and be like, I'm done with you. Maddie has had a little bit of a maturity. I don't understand why everyone is acting like this CD is the only CD that this, like... She Maddie definitely put, has a copy. She's burned it, obviously. It's Maddie. Like, yeah. there, there is no, like, oh, I need to go retrieve the CD from Maddie. Like, obviously, if Maddie had any brain cells in her head, yeah. which she does, she's made several copies of this and several other physical yeah. CDs if she has any intention of trying to blackmail... The family, which is another thing. What is her purpose of keeping the CD? We don't know. Power. Power. And Maddie loves power. Keeping Nate, like, well, does she even know Nate knows? I don't know. These are all questions I hope are answered next week. I don't even remember what's on the tape, to be completely honest. I know it's bad. You don't know what's on the tape. It's... It's critically think about what could be on the tape. It's the sex tape, tape, right? Yes. Okay. Between Cal and Jules. Well, I got confused because I don't remember... The whole, like, I literally don't remember season one. Mm -hmm. I remember, like, big moments. Couldn't tell you the plot line whatsoever. He tapes all of his, every No, I know that. I know that part. I know that part. But the, like, I don't remember, like, Nate and Maddie in season one. Like, I know huge stuff went down. Mm -hmm. And I thought the tape was somehow related to that, too. But it's not. She took it from his room. I think she took it from his room. Yeah. 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 She, during that time. Yes. Yeah. Towards the end of season one. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to getting some more um, content on that next week. I'm really looking forward to rounding up next week's episode. Yeah, I'm excited. Obviously, I mean, this wasn't the funnest episode to round up. Oh my God, but I didn't even want to. That's the thing, though. Like, Euphoria does glamorize drug re- yeah. drug use, but it needs to show the real. And I of think it. it did a good job. And that, that I mean, that is job. rock bottom right there. Yeah, like which she needed to get to yeah. for the show to make any sense really yeah so i'm really hoping that if that is rock bottom maybe we can see rue flourish and get yeah, clean that would be nice i mean i will never know peace until everyone on the <laughs> show knows peace which is never going to happen but yeah that's really though yeah think of all the plot lines 
I just it's too many. definitely it's one of those shows that no matter how hard they try, they could never wrap it up in a in a bow. Shows kind of yeah. shoot themselves in the foot a little bit when they bring in these many plot holes, like yeah. or plot lines. Like I mean, look at Pretty Little Liars, Riverdale. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's endless plot holes in those because it just gets a little crazy. It just keeps going, and there's more and more and more and more. And I feel like that's what's going on. That's b- people's biggest criticism is they feel like everything that happened in season one isn't applicable to anything that's happening yeah, in well, season two. I don't even remember season one and mm-hmm. I feel like I know what's going on, you know? Yeah. So well, I'm going to have to binge watch that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really excited for next episode. I can't wait yeah. to see what happens with Nate and Cassie. Um, thank you for listening to yeah. this episode of the, the weekend roundup. Our euphoria recaps obviously wasn't the funnest, like we said, <laughs> episode to recap, drama. But, but we are committed. Yeah. So we will see you here. Uh, next time to talk about episodes six and seven. And until then, talk talk soon. soon. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Weekend Roundup. Be sure to like, subscribe, and press the bell button. Talk soon.